Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We are continuing our conversation with Rhonda Washing. Uh, she, we've been talking about her experience with cancer, and uh, she was praying for healing, like a lot of us have, with different situations in our life, especially physical illnesses, and unfortunately didn't get the answer she wanted. Had to go through surgery and have a mastectomy, but uh, God has been faithful and has taught her so much, and um, she talks about the healing that she was getting not physically necessarily the way she wanted but spiritually and emotionally and mentally so i want to challenge you i don't want to just encourage you i want to challenge you to go back and listen even you guys because uh, i read her book that she has called the last arrow a quest for healing and uh, it's only 150 pages but it's got some powerful nuggets about faith and perseverance and just getting through storms in life uh, I read it in two days just uh, one of those books I couldn't put down so um, we've talked to her about that over the past three days and so uh, I want to encourage you to check that out uh, the, the, the book and the podcast go to our website hope is here dot today they're only 14 minutes uh, maybe you know somebody that's going through cancer or just got diagnosed with it um, or they you know have just been bitter about it because of going through it and it could have been several years uh, these podcasts would really encourage them they're only 14 minutes long you can actually even email them to them after you click on them but go to our website hope is here dot today that's hope is here dot today and uh, you can find those conversations the previous three that we've had with Rhonda Washington this week about her experience with cancer and how her faith became real all right so you know you've gone through the surgery you've met with oncologists thankfully and not spreading more into your lymph nodes uh, they felt like you know your oncologist was wise she doesn't like to use the words cancer free but went about as well as could probably be expected so you're still recovering you've got uh, you've, you've got to get chemo so there's still a big part of the journey left and you really had talked about in these other programs Rhonda where you've worked on your mind and how you're honest about how you struggled with fear and worry and uh, yet you really had gotten a good place with that but it's amazing sometimes those bad habits kind of sneak back up on us don't they they absolutely do Greg I kind of um, use the the thought or the the mental picture of almost like a thief casing a house to try and find some kind of a uh, point of entry and I felt that way with the enemy I just felt like he was casing me and and looking for an opportunity to discourage me and I shared um, last time about how horrible it was after the mastectomy just just the um, taking off those bandages um, but I I felt I heard the Lord always say look up just keep looking up just keep going on this is temporary I can restore anything I can restore you I can heal you and I, I need you to, to focus on me I felt like I was walking a tightrope and somebody was saying don't look down just keep looking up well I know that's a word for somebody uh, you've gotten in a place gotten discouraged with your circumstances and you're reverting back to some negativity and some lies from the enemy or uh joyce meyer calls it stinking thinking and so uh you know kind of make humor of it a, a real serious situation that you do you got to go back and stand on god's promises and he will provide that peace that passes all understanding and i uh, love how transparent and honest that Rhonda is about that and yet uh, the good news is that god still extends grace to us even when we still sometimes have to go back and fight that battle with some challenging habits yes and and i think i actually in some ways greg believed in part of my mind that of course God is good of course he loves me but that I also kind of had subconsciously this mental image of him up in heaven with his arms folded across his chest thinking oh good grief here comes Rhonda again why can't she ever pray about something spiritual why can't she be more disciplined why is she going on and on about this worn out worry that she's prayed about forever and that's not true God doesn't look at us that way he loves us and he he's delighted in us and he sees Christ when he looks at us that's the main thing uh, I just love that, uh, you know, because I, I know 
people listening just like me can relate that the things you go back and uh, we all have that thorn in the flesh that I think that Paul talks about that we ask God to remove and sometimes he does but sometimes it's just one of those things like Paul we have to deal with we don't know even what it was in Paul's life but I'm so thankful like you said that God's not standing up there with <laughs> crossed arms like oh goodness Greg not again about the you know your weight or eating healthy or whatever it is uh, you know that uh, he is a God of grace and yet uh, man you really continue to pour into your relationship with God and uh, just share some things I thought page 108 in your or 107 in your book was really uh, powerful it says I was learning that prayer is not a place to dwell on our sins it's a place to accept Christ's healing it's not a place to legalistically overanalyze our shortcomings, but to have every darkness covered by his blood. Now I was trading in my abilities for confidence in the power of Christ's blood to miraculously kill all the weeds in my soul. If Christ is the one cleaning my mind and heart and soul, then I must really be clean. A scripture I began to take to heart was 2 Corinthians 5.21. For our sake... He made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And that's something I cling to every day, Greg. I mean, I blow it just like everybody else every day. Instead of focusing on that sin and beating myself up or feeling good because I handled something well, which is meaningless compared to Christ, I focus on the fact that I am the righteousness of God. How crazy is that? I'm not just kind of good. I'm not just getting better and, and working all this out. I'm the righteousness of God through Christ alone, through his finished work. And when we don't understand that, we diminish what Christ did on the cross. It's, it, what he did covers everything. Amen. Wow, that was really powerful right there. I can't wait to go back and listen to this podcast myself because that was so good right there. And that's why we sing so many songs about the blood of Jesus um, because uh, that did. It covered everything um, that we deal with from head to toe, from birth to death. So uh, I love also in your book, uh, you had a sentence that closed out of the chapter. It said, the difficult part is to stop trying to save ourselves and uh Man, uh, you stay worn out and worried, don't you, when you try to be a savior of the world, in, especially even in just your own life? You do, and it's a cycle, as I, I described just a second ago, of being proud of yourself that you handled something well and really frustrated that you didn't, and it's all self-righteousness. How sad is that? It is putting um, all our eggs in the in our own righteousness basket, and I'm telling you, it's it's not going to work. Uh, we need to focus on Christ. And, the, and as I said, I felt like my job was to try to get better each day and to try to be more disciplined and less selfish. And I realized that God doesn't want to work on me and try to make me better. Revelations 21.5 says, Behold, I'm making all things new. He wants to completely make us new. Just recently, I had a frustrating situation. And I was praying, Oh, Lord, please just help me to love this person better. And I thought, okay, wait a minute. That's not a very powerful prayer. I mean, I might do okay today, and then I might lose it again the next day. And I thought, really, the better prayer is, Lord, let me, let you, let your love come through me to this other person. And that's the only thing that matters. Well, I love Joyce Meyer. She says, you know, I got news for you. She goes, you know, there's people in your life that rub you the wrong way. Just, you know, man, you just... Uh, you see them coming and you just you dread it because you're like oh goodness they're just your personalities are like oil and water and you go oh they just man, they just rub me the wrong way and uh, she's like I got news for you guess what uh, just like you think these people rub you the wrong way well got news for you this morning that uh, you're somebody's sandpaper <laughs> absolutely for sure you know and i don't want to think that i have somebody say a paper that i rub them the wrong way yet we all do and uh yet uh, god loves each of us right where we are we all have different struggles different gifts and yet uh maybe that is a word for somebody listening today that uh you know maybe there is a co-worker or a neighbor or a family member that they're that sandpaper yet uh, i want to remind you the bible says we're all made in the image of god and jesus loves them just as much as he loves us even though sometimes we do think we're a little more righteous so uh, as I found in my life, uh, as the Bible says, uh, humility comes before honor. <laughs> and so uh, be humble and pray for 
God help you love those people. Okay, we've talked about the surgeries. Uh, still had to do chemo, and you know, like a lot of people, I've heard about it. Probably everybody, but have an experience. Uh, share with our listeners what it's like uh, when you go in for chemo that first time. I have to do six rounds, um, and they progressively get worse. You're just more uh, tired each time. And I'll be honest, Greg, it was really hard for me to lose my hair. I mean, it's kind of like if your self-esteem survives a mastectomy, how about we have all your hair fall out? And um, not only that, um, and I, I'm going to uh, share how vain I am, but my my eyebrows. I mean, I just didn't look like me with without my eyebrows and my eyelashes. It was really, really tough and, and physically um uh, it's just so much to go through, but I'm now in this club that nobody would choose to be in, but I have this fellowship with so many women because I understand um, what they suffered, and we have that to, to share. I say that chemo binds hearts, and it loosens tongues. I can meet a woman, and in literally 30 seconds, we are sharing such intimate details and I'm able to share God's love because of what I went through with chemo but yeah it's really tough and there's a, a picture of a peacock on the cover of my book um, and peacocks became a symbol for me of new life in ancient times uh, you see a lot of peacocks on tombstones because they're a symbol of the resurrection and new life and there's this legend of course it's not true but the legend is that uh, a peacock's beautiful plumage is the result of its ability to eat poisonous bugs and venomous snakes. And so that became as um, symbolic of me taking in the poison of chemo for new life and new hope. Um, my, my husband used to teach, uh, tease me about um, how my hair was going to come in like beautiful feathers of a peacock. So, um, yeah, peacocks are very special to me. And then you had a great quote in there, too, about uh, the wig, and uh, there's a club or something about people that wear wigs uh, in the book. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's a, uh, it's a definitely a club nobody wants to be in, but um, uh, we call it going topless when you topless. first go yes, out yes. without your wig. And, and I was just so proud. I just had um, – it actually felt to me like a short-haired dog's fur, you know, when it first came in. And I was proud of it, um, but, you know, it's it's not easy to – to go out with uh, no hair on your head. Well, I'm sure for a lady that's got to be challenging. Obviously, uh, people know me. I'm foggly challenged, so I'm <laughs> thankful for Michael Jordan making that uh, popular many years ago. But uh, the eyebrows and eyelashes, too. And the thing to me that was so gruesome is I didn't realize, I mean, when you did this, I mean, you were there for like seven hours getting this. Oh, yes. Is that right? Yes, it, uh, yes. And it, it, um, I slept some of it. They really pump you full of Benadryl and and things to kind of offset that the the difficulty and i don't i don't want to dwell on that too much but um you know you, three days later you're pretty pretty sick and then the effects for me lasted for about two weeks and the main thing was just this incredible fatigue but you know i was so tired i, I was too tired to read or do anything and i was able to pray and just be with god in those times and he was so intimate and so close to me that there again, I don't want to say anything that would hurt anybody, but I wouldn't trade that time because of the intimacy I experienced with Christ. Well, we'll close with this today in your book. You said uh, near the end of it. So my journey to freedom included this time of healing, this time to learn and grow, to experience darkness in order to know light. Could there have been another way? Well, of course there could have been. It doesn't matter to me now. All I know is that now I am healed. And so I just thought that was so powerful because it didn't come from the surgery, um, you know, or like you know, you hope that you would have to have surgery, but you did, and then oh, I hope I won't have to have chemo, but you did. But yet God still spoke to you through all those times. So uh, we we've got fortunate that Ron is going to stay with us for one more day. We're going to have one more program, but uh, man, I hope you'll join us as we continue talking with Rhonda Washing uh, about her experience with cancer and just how her faith went to another level. We've been t sharing a lot out of her wonderful book about this journey called The Last Arrow, A Quest for Healing by Rhonda Washing. So I hope you'll tune in tomorrow and invite somebody to join us on Hope is Here.